All right. Well, praise God, praise God, saints. Today, I'm Brother Jesse Shepherd, and I uh, have Brother David on the phone here and on the online service. We're here to open up with our DHT number six. Uh, this is a uh, ministry of the Disciple Factory as Ambassadors for Christ uh, Assembly. And uh, we're going to open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. You've been so good to us, and we honor you. What we do today, we do for no other reason than to glorify you, to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, to save the souls of the people by any means necessary. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, teach us, Holy Spirit. Go beyond what we think, and you teach us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yes. Boom. One, two, three. We're recording. But praise God. Uh, we're in discipleship, uh, or DHT 06, but I'm going to uh, hit some highlights of last week's DOT 05. So we were on page 40. And we talked about how Jesus heals everyone he ever attempted to heal. So we were dispelling the myth that Jesus didn't heal all. The fact of the matter is, and the truth of the matter is, that everybody Jesus laid his hands upon, he healed. Everybody he attempted to heal, he healed. And this can be true of us because the scripture says, and these things you will do, and greater things shall you do than I do because the Father has gone to the Son. Amen. Also, he calls those things that are not as though they are, all right? So we're going to agree with the truth when we call things that are not as though they are. Amen. Let me sit back just a tad. <clears throat> uh, how did Jesus heal? There was a couple of ways Jesus healed. Amen. Number one was by the word of command, and number two was by the touch, the laying on of hands. Amen? Amen. All right. There's a couple of different types of faith. And we're going to talk about this just a tad. We're not, we're not re really talking about the amount of faith. We're talking about the quality of faith. We're talking about the type of faith that can persevere. Amen? Mm -hmm. We're also talking about faith that decides what it will be like beforehand. So if a person can imagine that a, 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 a paraplegic or someone who can't walk, if they can imagine how they ought to be, if they can imagine how it would be in heaven, and this is what we want to go after when we, when we heal the sick. If Amen. that person can't walk, just imagine how he would be if he stepped in heaven. He wouldn't be sick at all. He'd be able to walk. And so that's our goal. Right from day one and right from second one, we want to start seeing that person as they ought to be. Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Faith continues to persevere until it looks like what God's promise is concerning the situation. Amen. A key point I want to bring out also is that we need to stick with the healing. Many times we pray once or we pray twice and we let it go. Next thing you know, days have gone by, weeks have gone by, the person gets sicker and, and sometimes they die. What we have to do as God's representatives, we have to stick with it until it's done. Stick with it until it's finished. Amen. Stick Amen. with it until things move. A little acronym <clears throat> is pray <clears throat> until something, something happens. happens. Push. Amen. Push. Amen. Amen. We <clears throat> must forcefully apply the word of God to the facts until the facts give way to the truth. So the fact is the doctor says, hey, you got cancer. Fact is the doctor says you may only live for uh, six months. But what's the truth of the matter? Facts are limited to the earth realm. But the truth is, uh, is Jesus, and it comes from heaven. And the truth trumps fact every time. Amen. So Amen. if we stand on the truth, which says, by his stripes, you were healed. And then Peter comes along and says it later on, by your stripes, uh, you are healed. I hope I said that right. Isaiah said, you were healed. Peter comes Amen. along and says, you are healed. And Amen. that's the word of God. That's the truth. And so if you stand on that, it will trump. It will eat away at the facts. It will change the facts. Amen. And that's how we heal the sick. That's the secret. Stand with it. Amen. So we push. And uh, a worldly example was uh, one, of the, uh, one of the hip hop artists says, won't stop, can't stop. And so I'm going to say that applies to this. Let's not stop 
praying for the sick, and I say praying, but ministering healing to the sick until we see changes in their physical uh, circumstance. Amen. Amen. We won't stop. We can't stop. We can't stop. We won't stop. Amen. All right. Question comes up. Does a person have enough faith? Um, what they're really saying is, uh, I don't believe God can, can be trusted in this matter. A person says, I don't think I have enough faith. But what they're really saying is, I don't think God can be trusted in this particular matter. So it's never a question of faith because all you need, well, he didn't say you need a size, a, a, a faith the size of a mustard seed. What he said was that if faith the size of a mustard seed is applied, that'll move mountains. So what Amen. if you have half, half of that, half of that size of a mustard seed? You can get something done. Amen. Amen. Don't try to develop your faith. Rather, just trust God. That's the key. Can I trust God when the going gets tough and rough? Can I trust God when I don't have enough money in the bank, but yet certain bills are due? Can I remain trusting God and not move? Amen. That's the key. Can I trust God when I just commanded the, the, the sick to be healed, and yet they still are in pain? I have to look past the, sick, the physical circumstance and minister healing. I have to imagine in my heart the truth. I have to refer back to the truth and, and ignore uh, the temporary. What we see is temporal, the scripture says, or temporary. But what is unseen is eternal in the heavens. So we have to fix our gaze on Christ and on what the word says in order to minister healing. Uh, Curry Blake says, once you cast out devils, uh, devils seek rest. Okay. And he defined that rest as recreation. They seek recreation once you cast them out, and then they try to come back to the house, but they find it swept and clean. The house is the human body, the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's what it's really designed for. But if the temple of the Holy Spirit is not being used for its uh, purpose, then these other uh, weak and beggarly spirits will try to get in and control. Amen. So they're looking for recreation. And don't forget, those spirits have feelings. That the scripture says that they tremble. They tremble at the, at the word of God and at the name of God. Amen. These devils have a mind, will, and emotion. They can be intimidated, I found, through a personal experience. They're just, um, they're not God, period. They're not the almighty. They have fear, and this is how Satan rules them anyway. He, re he rules his own kingdom through fear. But remember this, as men and women of God, you can... Uh, inflict fear in these devils as you wield the power and authority. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. One point I want to bring up, and then we're going to go to uh, number six, is that the woman with the issue of blood, she snuck up behind Jesus, pressed through the crowd, and then she touched him. And Jesus didn't know what was going on. He said, who touched me? Somebody touched me because virtue came out of me. And what she did was she decided that if I do X, Y, Z, I will be healed. She actually fixed in her heart how she was going to he get healed. She Amen. said, if I touch him, I'll get healed. And so when you have faith and you decide to do something, God is so big that he can answer even that prayer. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. So now we're going to uh, six. Amen. We're going to six. Let's make sure we're on six. We're going to go to 44. Let me go to 44. Bless the Lord. All right. It's all about being like Jesus. Being like Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right, Brother David, I'm going to ask for your help, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Can you through this and read <clears throat> a little Excuse bit for me. us? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is not enough <clears throat> that servant that the servant be as his master, Matthew 10, 23 to 25. But when they persecuted you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the son of man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciples that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, 
how much more shall they call them of his household? That's the King James Version. Amen. Amen. Welcome, uh, oh, Sister Anissa. God bless you. God bless you, Sister. Can you hear us? She need. I don't think we can hear her. She may need to do the audio thing. Okay. Sister Anissa, if you can hear us, unmute yourself. God bless you, sis. Let's see. Chat, rename, share, spotlight. Okay. So I hear something, but it's not loud. Okay. All right. So the point I want to raise here is that uh, if we want to be an example of Jesus, if you want to be a disciple and an example of Jesus, you can't be that if you just preach a gospel that has no power. To separate Amen. the power from Jesus and Jesus from the power is to be a poor example. Praise God. Is that Sister Anita? Yes, sir. She just came on. I got you. Amen. God bless you, sis. Praise be the Lord. Persistence, persistence. Yes, it pays yeah. off. Welcome, welcome. And we just got a phone call in. I don't know who that is. They need yes. to announce themselves. Welcome. Who is this on the phone? God bless you. Welcome. Who called in? Last four digits, 4774. Oh, Brother George. Hey, hey brother, man, George. brother George. Welcome, my brother. Hey, Amen. We have uh, Sister Anissa and Brother David with us. Amen. 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 So I guess what I'll do is ask, you know, those, I think on the phone to, to mute yourself because I can hear uh, myself talking. But if you have something to say, just chime in, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. So I was saying Matthew 10. We basically are saying that to be the, the um, still getting feedback noise. Let's see. Everybody mute yourself for me for one second. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. So Matthew 23 through 25, basically we're saying that Jesus is the perfect example, that when a disciple was fully taught, he will be like his master. All right, and so the point that we're bringing out today is that to be fully taught is to realize that Jesus does not operate without power. So some of these churches that we see uh, that don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit or the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the tongues or signs and wonders, the gifts of the Spirit, uh, claiming falsely that these gifts ended during the Middle Ages or ended when the last apostle died, that's a lie. That's false. I can disprove that myself through personal experience, number one, but more importantly, through the more sure word, amen, which says that signs and wonders continue to happen to this very day and shall continue to happen even after we pass away physically if the Lord hadn't come first. So to be a very good example of the master, you will walk in signs, wonders, gifts of the spirit, and miracles confirming your ministry. And it's not really our ministry. We know it's the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ in us. And so that's the point. Amen. Brother David, if you'll chime back in and read uh, Luke 6, 39 through 40. I appreciate that. Uh, Luke 6, 39 through 40. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Praise God. The word perfect means not perfect as we take it today, but it means to be full grown. It Amen. means to be complete. Amen. There's another scripture that says we are complete in Christ. And so you are complete in Christ in one sense. On another, or in another sense, you have to walk this thing out. In other words, when you first get saved, love may not be your dominant characteristic, but as you walk this thing out, as the word gets in you, as the word builds your spiritual uh, 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 bones and your spiritual nourishment or puts that spiritual meat on those bones, you will become full of love. You'll have patience. You'll operate and, and demonstrate the very uh, uh, fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace. But if you're a Christian or a believer who... Uh, don't, don't have these characteristics in your heart, then that tells you that 
there's still some more perfection to be had. Amen. So the Lord himself says when a disciple is fully taught, when he, uh, when he becomes fully taught, he'll be just like his master. He'll be perfect. He'll be complete. Amen. And so again, we're underlining the fact that Jesus walked in the power and to do anything other than that is not the example of Jesus. Praise God. Uh, sister Nisa, if I can bother you a little bit, my dear, and this is my sister from way back. Do you mind reading Ephesians 4, 11 through 15, growing up into him, if you would? You have to unmute yourself, though. Let's see if I can unmute you. Boom. Can't do it, sis. I, I'm trying to unmute you from my end. Unmute. No, okay. No problem, no problem. I'll read it myself. I apologize, y'all. We, we, we're using um, some new technology it's similar to Zoom that we've been using, but um, either way, we're gonna make this work. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so, and he gave some apostles, you guys probably know this by heart, probably can quote it, and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying, which means building up of the body of Christ. So we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Sounds like your back sister, Anissa. Can you take yes. the uh, NT15? It says, in ice, mm -hmm. a primary preposition, to or into, indicating the point reached or entered. A place, time, or figuratively, purpose. Amen. And we're talking about what? We're talking about growing up in, into him. We're growing, about growing up into him. Amen. And that's the, um, the Greek word for growing up into him, ice. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I got you. Amen. Let me put a little bit more on you. Uh, first John 2, 4 through 6, please. Okay. He that saith, I know him, and keep not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keepeth his word in him, verily, is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abide in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. You want me to continue? Yes, please. First John 3 and 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Praise God. And 1 John 4, 17 says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. The works I do, he says in John 14, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, Amen. and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. What are we talking Amen. about? We're talking about being perfected and being just like our master. Well, Jesus yes. is our master. 
And we see that as he is in this world, so are we. The scripture yeah. is very clear that, you know, he's our only example. I think we touched on that last week or two weeks yes. ago. Not Paul, not Peter, not John. Amen. Not the Old Testament prophets, not Moses, not even Elijah, as great as he was. But Jesus, Jesus could do everything they did and more. Think about Hallelujah. it. He had the same spirit of God upon him. Uh, they said that Elijah ran as fast as a horse, some 40 to 50 miles per hour. Wow. Jesus chose to do that. He could have done it too. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 who was it? Samson had the strength stronger than any man we know of. If Jesus chose to do that, he could have moved the boulder physically mm -hmm. that, was, uh, that was across his resurrection grave. Mm -hmm. Hey, he could do anything. If he wanted to open the Red Sea like Moses, he could have done it. And, mm -hmm. and, and the point is, as he is in this world, so are we, praise be to the Lord. So, praise God, Amen. praise God. Amen. Praise There's two tactics of the enemy, and I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me not get ahead of myself. Yeah, I think okay. Brother Bernard came in as well. Yes, welcome, Brother Bernard Bloodsworth. God bless you, my friend. Yes, God bless you all. Amen. Amen. I know you can't see, but uh, I'll give you a chance. You and Brother George are on the line as well. So we have you, George. Sister Anissa and Brother David. All right. And so I'll give you guys a chance to comment if you want to. Just speak up and you certainly can have the floor. Uh, Mark 16, 18 through 20. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Okay. Moving mm -hmm. down to page 46. Thank you, Lord. Page 46. Where are you at? While you get in there, Jesse, I just want to say. Can I say something? Help yourself, sis. Um, I have been praying about what to share with my children for the sermon today. Amen. And um, I asked the Lord, you know, first of all, Lord, I don't believe that I'm just doing this. Because we do stuff and want God to bless it. But I believe that you want me to do this. Now show me what you want me to do. And it was so odd. He said to me, show them what I show you. Mm. Amen. Mm. <laughs> I like that. I like that. He said, show them what I show you. And that's basically all Jesus was saying when he was on the earth. Amen. He was saying, my, my father showed me this. I'm <laughs> showing you this. You talk in scripture, sister. I do nothing except I see my father do it first. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. That's important. Um, would you care to read this, Brother David? Just trying to keep going in order. Yeah, no problem. Um, this is section six, killing sacred cows. Uh, Job was not in the covenant um, we are in, and we know that. Uh, Job one. 6 through 12. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the works of his hand and his substance is increased in the land. And 11 says, But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself. Put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And Amen. we know the story of Job, but we're not going to go through it. But the point that we want to raise here, we all know what happened to Job. We all know that he got, what, double 
We know that Job, uh, Job's wife said, curse God and die. Job refused to do it. We know that Job's friends uh, basically accused him falsely. They were wrong the whole time. And um, basically, Job was in a different covenant than us. This is what I want to underline. Don't compare yourself to Job. During those days, and we're not sure that this happens today, but during those days, Satan came in with the sons of God or the angels, presented himself to God and was able to talk to God. All right, not sure that happens today. At least I haven't found a scripture. All right, we do know that Satan accuses the brethren, though. That's New Testament. All right, so the point is, Job, they say that's the oldest book of the Bible. They say this predated Moses and the law of Moses, predated Abraham and the fathers, okay? So we basically cannot use Job as our New Testament example because guess who is? Jesus is our Jesus. example. Yeah. And guess what? We are under the new covenant, which is a covenant of grace. Not necessarily how I've heard grace taught, but basically I'm saying it, we're, we're a product of grace under this dispensation versus being a product of the law. In other words, the way God deals with us is differently on how he will deal and did deal with uh, the likes of Job. Amen. Amen. Can I, can I say something about, about Job also? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what I saw, everything you said was correct. What I saw in that was the faith that he had in God to not give up, even though things were thrown at him, even with his wife, his friends, and uh current situation losing his family and his faith you know was so admired by god you know by what he done stay, stay close to him which he, that's what end up giving him double you know double portions so just amen. want to point that out as also amen thank you. thank you thank you anybody else have anything to say sister anise i think i muted you because there's a lot of feedback when you're not talking okay okay i don't know if you have uh, two machines on or just one or maybe it's um I don't know. I'm just guessing. I don't know. Let's see. Where did I stop, guys? Anybody know the page? You were down at 46. Okay. 46. 46. Okay, so well, thank, thank you for your patience. Is that 47? Yeah, right there. All right. So we know Job's story. We're going to go past that. That was my intent. Okay. okay. Praise God. Anybody have anything to say while I'm turning? Feel free. There's 48. All right. Paul's thorn. <laughs> All right. This is going to be interesting, y'all. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, Sister Nisa, if you can read for me. Um, I'm going to try to unmute you and you unmute yourself. If it, okay. Sorry, I just muted you back. You just My muted bad. Back. <laughs> so sorry. There you go, Seth. Okay, wait a minute. All okay. thorn. Okay. What is a thorn? The phrase thorn in the flesh always refers to a person or people, never to sickness or disease. Mm. Every time the phrase is used, it always tells specifically what the thorn was. Amen. Number, number 33. You want me to go on? Yes, please keep, keep going. Yes, number 33 and 55. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to, it shall come to pass that those who, which ye let remain in of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your side, and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Amen. If I can just highlight in numbers, even going back to the Old Testament, how do you interpret the scripture except by the scripture? We see in the Old Testament, uh, way before Paul was talking about his thorn, we see how thorn was used. And we see what? We see that 
uh, what's it say? It says, ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes. Who is it talking about? And thorns in your side. It's talking about people, not yeah. sickness. Amen. Yeah. And Joshua 23, 13, please. No, no for certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God had given you. Amen. It speaks for itself. Amen. People, mm. people, not sickness, people are thorns. Amen. Mm. Uh, Paul was mm. a Bible scholar. He would have known what the phrase meant. And let's see, my, my thing is blocking here. He would have known what it meant. And his hearers would have known what it meant. Right. That's good. Amen. So what's Acts 9, 16 say? It says, God told Ananias to heal Paul and tell him what he would suffer for Jesus' sake. Not that he was suffering his blindness for Jesus' sake. Y'all all remember that scripture, right? Right. Right. He was blind because he saw the Lord. He saw the bright light. And uh, it knocked him off his high horse. And when he got up, he was blinded. The light was so bright. So if Paul was suffering from a, a, a thorn that was a sickness or disease, why did God allow him to be blinded, right? Help me develop mm -hmm. this thought. He was blinded temporarily. So when, when Ananias laid hands on him, if God wanted him to keep that thorn, then he would have only received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and his blindness would have stayed. Mm -hmm. But what we do see in the scripture is that the scales fall off his eyes. The blindness is, is banished. He receives the infilling of the Holy Ghost and he becomes Paul transformed from Saul. Amen. So again, that's another proof text of why Paul's thorn was not sickness. That's good. Isn't that good? Praise God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Please. Hallelujah. But the Amen. Lord said unto him, anybody else have a comment? I'm sorry. No, I was just saying amen. 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 But the Lord said unto him, go thy way. He said, go that way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way, hallelujah, and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, this is why the Lord sent him, that Lord. he should receive his sight. Not that he should uh, pour salt into his wound, pour salt into his eyes. No, God don't have to teach us lessons under this new dispensation and covenant. Not like that. But during Job's day, maybe, perhaps, perhaps, but not this day. And immediately, verse 18, there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this is what I dig right here, y'all. This is awesome. Watch this. This says things that Paul suffered for the name of Jesus. Number one, Jews determined to kill Paul right after his conversion. Number two, he was hindered in joining the Christians. Number three, he was opposed by Satan. Four, he was opposed by Jews in a mob. Five, he was expelled out of Antioch. Six, he was mobbed and expelled from Iconium. Seven, he fled to Lystra in Derby, where he was stoned and left for dead. Eight, he was disputing continually with false brethren. Nine, he was beaten and jailed at Philippi. Ten, he was mobbed and expelled from Thessalonica. Eleven, he was mobbed and expelled from Berea. Twelve, he was mobbed by Corinth. Thirteen, he was mobbed at Ephesus. Fourteen, there was a plot against his life by the Jews. And 15, he was seized by Jews, mobbed, tried in court five times, and suffered other hardships. So we see the word of the Lord was correct that Ananias told him. 
that you would suffer great things. No, he didn't tell him he would suffer sickness. He said, but he would suffer great things. And all those things, if you notice, to be mobbed is to be mobbed by people, not mobbed by devils, not, by, not mobbed by sickness and disease. It's mobbed by people. And 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10 says, Paul prayed that this storm would be removed. Nowhere in the New Testament does anyone ever pray to God for healing, right? And nowhere in the New Testament is any person ever told to ask God for healing. But Paul besought the Lord thrice, asking him to remove this thorn. So if the thorn wasn't sickness, what was, what was Paul asking? He was asking that God would uh, stop allowing him to be beat down. Stop allowing mm. him to be stoned. You know, this hurts. I got bruises. Amen. Yeah. So he was asking that God would give him a, 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 a clear path where, the, where the, uh, the gospel could be preached without him fearing for his life. And yes, Paul did fear for his life. We say men of God and women of God don't fear, but they do. Paul said fear on the inside, troubles on the outside, one of those scriptures. All right, 2 Corinthians 12, 5 through 10. Of such an one I will glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. What is it? The messenger of Satan to buffet me lest I should be exalted above measure. So we, we see here exactly why and what. Why was the thorn given to him? The thorn was given to him. Anybody want to say it before I answer? Why was the thorn given to him? To keep him meek. To keep him meek. Because he was given such great revelations to keep him meek and humble. That's mm -hmm. why the thorn was given to him. Amen, Sister Nisa. And, and, mm -hmm. and what was the thorn? What was the thorn? We know the thorn was, in one sense, in the natural, it was the people. But what was the thorn spiritually? Verse 7. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. Right. The messenger of mm. Satan is a fallen angel. There was a fallen angel that was allowed to go where Paul went and stir up the people to mob mm. him, to stone him. To oppose him, wow. perhaps in that deep, in, in the scriptures deep, and, yes. and perhaps he re, he he was reaping what he sowed. I don't know, but perhaps yeah. because he chased yeah. Christians down, putting his foot through the door, arresting men, women, and children, and even killing men, women, and children as you do your study. So, this was a big deal. It was a big deal. I remember Paul saying, I am the least of the apostles. Don't even deserve to be called an apostle. Maybe he had a little guilt going on because he allowed, even though he was a great Pharisee, well studied under Gamaliel, you know, that's like going to Harvard for the day or Princeton or somewhere. And he was a top student, even though he was a great Pharisee. And he said, that's to the law, sinless. But when it came to where the rubber met the road, he failed the Lord Jesus. In fact, Jesus said, Paul, Paul, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You're killing the way you treat these little ones is the same way you're treating me. And as much as you do it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me, the scripture says in another place. So every time he put to death the men, the women, the children, it was like crucifying the Lord afresh. I believe that the Lord gave Paul insight of why he had that on in the flesh so that he, he would not rise up in his flesh to be a great, to, to seat himself as a great man. Amen. Um, I was watching God's generals and one of the um, generals did such great work in the Lord, he in the end thought he was Elijah. I know about one of those guys. There was a couple of them like that, but you're right. He thought he was Elijah, recarnated. That's and God, I believe the work 
that God had for Paul was far too important for to let him fall in that in that sin or in that um in that mistake in that fall. Because we can good. we we all that sin is always present yes. to make us think that we're better than someone else. Isn't that the truth? That's he had to humble him. He had to humble him. He had to humble him. <laughs> had to humble him. And I like what Sister Anissa is saying because I do know, I've read about a couple of the, uh, the great evangelists, such as uh, William Branham. Uh, they called him the prophet of the 20th century. He was one of the first that could tell you the address, tell you your name without anybody telling him, without any uh, fake hearing aids or, or radio devices. He just had the spirit of the, Lord, of the Lord working on him like that, and great miracles occurred. But when it was all said and done, this man thought he was Elijah the prophet. And he still, to this very day, has a cult gathering called the uh, Branhamites. The Branhamites. They believe he's coming back again like Jesus. It's a shame. Wow. It's a shame. But anyway, um, verse 8, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Remember what that word perfect means. Complete, full grown. Amen. Amen. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities or my weaknesses, not my sicknesses, my weaknesses, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. Now, isn't that all what people do to you? They reproach you, mm -hmm. they persecute you, they distress you, they oppress you. For when yeah. I am weak, then am I strong. Paul said it was a messenger. And that word messenger in the Greek means angelos or angel, a messenger or angel of Satan. So that means that uh, it was definitely one of the third that fell from heaven, a third of the angels. Amen. Christians are told to heal, not to ask for healing. Uh, who's next? Anybody want to read this one? Between David and Anissa? Are we? Which one? Where are we? Galatians? Galatians 6. Let me bring this down a little bit. There you go. Galatians 6, 11 to 18. How large a letter, not big letters, not long letters. Ye shall, ye see how large a letter I have written unto you, and with my own hand, as many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only least they should suffer persecution from the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world, whoops, <laughs> he got me there. Sorry, whom the sorry, world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision, circumcision availeth anything, nor circumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy and upon the Israel of God. For henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Literally, the marks of the Lord Jesus was all those bruises, gnashes, contusions. I'm sure they made Paul bleed. When rocks hit the, hit the skin, it, it breaks the skin. Amen. He, he, he uh, bore in his body the very marks of the Lord Jesus because we know the Lord Jesus was beaten. His beard was pulled. They stuck him with a, uh, with a spear. They, they, they nailed him with uh, giant nails into his hands and his feet. These are really the marks of the Lord Jesus. Suffering, physical suffering. Amen. Being mobbed and beat up. I mean, it's, it's a shame. But each of the apostles died a violent death in honor of their Lord except uh, John. And even John was tossed into, as, uh, as a history, church history says, he was tossed into a boiling pot 
of oil. And yet the Lord delivered him miraculously, and then they couldn't kill him, so they banished him to the Isle of Patmos, where he penned and wrote the Revelation of Jesus Christ, that are known as uh, the Book of Revelation. Amen. Amen. Galatians 4, 13 through 15. He says, he would have plucked out their eyes. Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh, I preached the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despise not, nor reject it, but, me, but receive me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then the blessedness ye speak of or spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and, gave, and have given them to me. All right. I just want to say that people would take this and misinterpret it and say that Paul had weakness of the eyes, sickness of the eyes, that his infirmity of the flesh was some type of a disease of the eyes. But again, we see when, when, when the Lord sent Ananias to lay hands on him, the purpose was to heal his eyes. Amen. The purpose was that he would receive the, the spirit baptism. And so we see that this wouldn't hold together in scripture, <clears throat> that, that Paul was sick. <clears throat> All right. Luke 4 and 12, when the devil had ended all temptation and Jesus answering said unto him, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And when Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Luke twenty two forty. 40, pray that ye enter not into temptation, and when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray, pray that ye enter not into temptation. First Corinthians 4, Paul tells of his hardships again. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and buffeted. Again, buffeted, that's physical, and have no certain dwelling place. They're homeless <laughs> and labor working with our own hands, being reviled, that's being revived by people, reviled by people. It says we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it. Amen. Being defamed, we entreat, we are made as the filth of the world and are the offscouring of all things unto this very day. When I was at ORU in college, they had a, a, a brother wing. They didn't have... Um, uh, what do you call it, a uh, fraternity, but they had a brother wing, and one of the uh, the names of the brother wing was uh, Amarats. Amarats meant the filth of the world, the off-scouring of all things. That's what that always reminds me of when I see that scripture. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 11, buffet, blow after blow, translation in Spanish as beaten with many blows. We're talking physical here, y'all. It's not spiritual buffeting. This is physical. He was getting beat down. He was bleeding. And Jesus came physically to the earth for this very reason, that his body should be offered, amen, as a sacrifice. Amen. That does not match sickness, but it does match being beaten by persecutors. Amen. Going down yeah. to Paul left people sick. Right. Okay, we have about seven minutes and counting. I'm going to try to get this done quickly. That's why I'm reading a little bit. Uh, doing a lot of reading, guys. But Paul left people sick, 2 Timothy 4.20. Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Militum sick. Philippians 2.25. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. No shame in that. People get sick. For Amen. indeed, he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not only on him, or not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore the more carefully, that when you see him again, ye may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive him, therefore, in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in reputation. 30. Because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me. What are we saying? 
he was sick unto death because of the work of Christ. That's what we're saying. Amen. He left him there sick, but it was because of the work of Christ. People get hurt because of the work of Christ. Some things come except to bring glory to God. That's the world we live in. We don't live in heaven yet, guys. Amen. It comes with affliction and persecution. That's the, that's the calling we've been called to. And the calling, by the way, is an invitation. Not that you have to be five-fold ministry, apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, pastor, elder, bishop, deacon, deaconess. No, that's not the call. The call is an invitation. Come unto me, all who ye, all who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come into the boat of salvation. I am the ark of safety, and I'll give you rest. That's the invitation. Obey my words. Prove that you love me. That's the invitation. That's the call. Display Christ as best you can. All right. Here's a, a, a Greek definition to be feeble in any sense. King James, be diseased, impotent folk, uh, sick, weak. All right. It says it's more likely that Trophimus and Epaphroditus suffer from exhaustion from their missionary travels, from their work, than that they were sick with a sickness of some kind. It is also strange that if Paul had a specific physical illness, that he would have or would not have detailed it in a more specific way when listing all he has suffered because of his many revelations. We just don't see that in the scripture, guys, that, that you know, Paul suffered from this great sickness. Okay, then people like to bring up tendencies that God won't heal all people because look at this, Timothy had a stomach problem. Mm. So this is why we're going through these scriptures to offset these circuit cows, these, these, these lies and these uh, misnomers, these errors. Okay, a bishop then must be blameless the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober of good, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy or of filthy lucre or money, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. Amen. First Timothy 3, likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. That's money. First Timothy 5, drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. Okay, let's look this word up. Asthenia, feebleness of mind or body, by implication, malady, morality, fragility. King James defines it as disease, infirmity, sickness, or weakness. Mm. Okay, so that's it, guys. That's, that's section six. Boy, you and, did a great um, job. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. Three minutes to spare. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Trying to unmute Sister Nisa. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just trying to unmute you, my sister. Okay. I enjoyed that. Amen. Amen. I that was blessed. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. That's, that's good to know. Amen. Yeah.